Hello and welcome to Linux Leech. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use wildcards. So let's get started. Okay, if you have a look at my desktop over here, I've got two directories, one called copies, which is empty, and one called wildcards, which has got some files in it. So to get started, I'm just going to open up my terminal using the keyboard shortcut command. And I'm just going to cd over into this directory. So cd desktop forward slash wildcards and I'm just gonna clear the screen and ls just to make everything clearer so as you can see we've got the files that are actually in this directory listed and I'm gonna start off by showing you how to use the question mark wildcard now what this actually does is it replaces a single character space or character position within a file name. So that doesn't really make much sense but let's start with an example. So what I want to do is I want to ls word3.doc which is this file over here. So if I hit enter it's listed word3.doc. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the question mark wildcard to replace one of the character positions within this file name. So if I type in wo question mark d 3 dot doc and hit enter you can see that it's actually listed word 3 dot doc. So what this question mark is actually doing is it's telling ls the pattern that we're looking for here starts with the first character position being w, the second being an o, the third we're not too sure about but something is there and then d after that, 3 dot doc, and that's what it's done. So we can actually use the question mark wildcard in any position within a file name. So let's use two of them. So w question mark question mark d3 dot doc, and hit enter, and there we go. We can also use more than that. So ls let's do w o r d 3 dot doc and hit enter there we go listed exactly what we were looking for now we don't have to just use it for the beginning of the file name we can actually use them in the extension as well so if i just type in word 3 dot question mark question mark question mark and hit enter you can see that that pattern's matched so it doesn't really matter whether you use the question mark wildcard for the beginning of the file name or for the extension, it makes absolutely no difference. It's still one whole file name and that's how it's treated. So it doesn't seem too useful to just use it to list one file name. So let's try and get it to list a group of file names. So I'm just going to clear the screen and then ls again, just so everything's clear. And I'm going to get the question mark wildcard to help me list these three JPEG images here. Now, the difference between these and the rest of the JPEG images is these only have three character positions before the .jpg. So what I can do is I can just write ls, and what we're looking for is something that's got three characters and then .jpg, and if I hit enter, it's listed those three. So you can see now that these question marks actually do take up exactly one character position, as we've seen here. And it is more useful to list groupings of files rather than just single files, which is really what it's for. So now let's try and list these picture files with double digits after it. So it's not going to list any of these single digit ones, but it's going to list these double digits. So let's type in ls and then pic, all in lowercase. Remember, everything's case sensitive. And then there are two character spaces after that, which are these two number digits. So for any of these. And then the file ends in .jpg. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for 
any file name that starts with a lowercase pic has got two characters after it don't really care what they are and to actually list these we really don't care what they are and ends in .jpg so if I hit enter you can see that it's only listed the JPEG images that have got double digits after the lowercase pic so that's just a brief introduction to using the question mark wildcard and now we're going to move on to the star or asterisk wildcard now the best way to think about this is it kind of works in the same way as the question mark wildcard the only difference is it doesn't just take up one position it can take up multiple character positions so let's just clear the screen and ls again and we're going to use the star wildcard to list these files so the files.txt so to list all of them now we could do that using the question mark wildcard possibly by typing in a question mark for each position or we could just use the star wildcard to say anything so anything that ends with .txt as these are the only file names that end in .txt so list starts with anything the length doesn't really matter because this doesn't just take up one character position it can take up as many as it needs to and it ends with .txt so if we hit enter you can see that it's listed all of the text files including this one here which we weren't actually looking for so what we need to do is we need to make our pattern which is what this is called a bit more specific and that's always a good idea when using wildcards is to make your patterns as specific to what you're looking for as possible so let's go and have a look back at these files that we were trying to list and the differences between these and the treasure island.txt file is quite obvious it's quite a few differences so we can use that to our advantage when we're actually trying to list them so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type ls and then I'm going to use the f character so f so starts with f has got anything in the middle we don't really care and ends with .txt so if I hit enter now you can see that this file here hasn't been listed and that's because it doesn't start with an f but if I say change this to a T and hit enter that's the only one that gets listed so you can see that the star wildcard actually takes up multiple character positions and basically as many as it needs to and it's quite a flexible way of listing large groupings of files now when creating your patterns you're not limited to using only one wildcard you can use question marks with the asterisk wildcard you can also use things like wildcard character classes which I'll actually get into in the next tutorial so let's go ahead and combine a question mark wildcard with the asterisk wildcard and let's use it to list these double digit picture files here so if I type ls they all start with a P, lowercase p, so let's throw that in there. And then I'm going to use the asterisk wildcard for the I and the C. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two question mark wildcards for these double digits. So question mark, question mark, and then dot JPEG. So let's just go over this pattern again. So what we're saying is the file name has to start with a lowercase p which it does it's got kind of anything in between there we're not sure about the length of the characters but we know that closer to this period point here or full stop there are two digits before it which is what's here and it ends in .jpg so now if we press enter you can see that it hasn't just listed these double digit ones it's actually listed the single digit ones so this is another case where the pattern actually looked specific enough to match but it obviously wasn't because it's listed these so if we have a look at these we can see that they start with a lowercase p which is correct 
And then what's actually happened is this anything here, or this star wild card, has actually counted for nothing, as you can see here, because the two question marks have actually taken up these positions. So in some cases, the star wild card can actually mean anything or nothing. So that's just something to bear in mind when you're actually creating your patterns. So let's edit this pattern to actually list what we want it to list. So if we type ls, and then let's type in, let's use the wildcard at the beginning, and then let's type in ic or c, and then question mark, question mark for the two digits, and then dot jpeg. So that should work because we're using the asterisk wildcard to take the positions of the P and the I. Then we're saying there's a C there and two question marks and it ends in .jpg. So now if we hit enter, you can see that it's listed what we wanted. So that's something to be very careful of when using wildcards, especially with other commands because ls is quite a safe command to use, all it does is list things, but if you're using, say, rm, you could potentially remove files that you didn't want to remove. So, sometimes it might be a good idea to actually test out your wildcard pattern just using ls, just to make sure before you actually start removing things. It's just something to keep in mind. So, now just to demonstrate that wildcards actually work with any command that takes a file name as an argument. I'm just going to open up this copies file, put that over there, and the wildcards directory. And I'm just going to clear the screen in ls. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy all of these words, word.doc files, to this copies directory here. So to do that, we're just going to type cp, and then we're going to type in anything dot doc and we're going to copy that to copies so I've gone up a directory to my desktop and then back down into copies and now if I hit enter you can see that it's copied all of those files there so now that I know there's only dot doc files here it's quite safe to remove those so if I just type in rm and because I'm actually not in this directory I'm going to have to use a dot dot and then a forward slash copies to go up and then back down into copies in the exact same way that I did it here using the cp command and I'm going to say another forward slash and anything dot doc and then hit enter and as you can see they've all been removed now, in that case, I could have actually just used the asterisk wildcard without the dot doc because there was nothing else in there that I really cared about. I knew exactly what I put in there, so I could have actually used that, but it's not really a good idea to do those kind of things unless you really have to. So that's the basics of the question mark and the asterisk wildcard. And I hope you found that useful. And that has actually brought us to the end of this tutorial. So thanks for watching. And please don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow Linux Leech over on Twitter at Linux Leech and on facebook.com forward slash Linux Leech. So thanks again for watching and goodbye.